Good evening. Welcome back to Outward. Last time we witnessed a guy getting torn to shreds by a chicken, my inability to learn from my mistakes and the never-ending suffering that was bestowed upon me after I lost my house. This time, we are starting over to witness the aftermath of a destroyed civilization. You see, in my everlasting wisdom I never paid much attention to the pop-up you get when you launch the game, and as it turns out, I managed to play the wrong version of the game without even knowing. However, since I am now officially the Lord of the Undead, in this video we'll be using Hellfire to melt our foes and sacrifice their blood. So with that out of the way, let's get into the meat of it. I thought of the most evil name I could and made my character. Please welcome the soon to be best blood mage of our time, the one whose name will echo through history, Ned. As always, I woke up, got caught up, was told to pay the blood money I owed to the clan and left together said money. As you may remember from the previous video, I'm pretty bad at this game, however, thanks to my 20 hours of gameplay I did for that video, I'm significantly better, so I was able to catch up pretty quick is what I would have said if I didn't have 4 hours of footage of just me eating dirt. But that comes later. So as a start, I did the first and only logical step that will get me closer to the money, and enter the mayor's house to rob her for everything she's got. How else am I gonna repay my dad? Trick question. I won't. They will. At least a portion of it anyways. Either way, this time around, since I'm planning to become a mage, I need to have access to mana, so I headed to the ley line in the middle of the map. It's quite a walk, but instead of doing that, I asked this upstanding gentleman to teleport me to the top. Efficient. Inside, I was greeted by Zephyrin, who I team up with to clear the dungeon. Listen up. Get to work, slave. Dragons! And just like that, I'm at the ley line better known as the Nine Creeps' Cave, where Nine Creeps stand around and just watch you. I invest some points into mana and ask the first watcher to teach me the fire sigil. Perfect. With that, I leave and proceeded to almost get my arse penetrated by some random bandit. A little while later, I find myself on the beach where I find this interesting blue stuff in the sand. As it turns out, that's crystal ma- Blue sand, which sells for a pretty penny. With that, I paid the blood money, and I've done all I needed here, so I left to explore uncharted lands. There are two DLCs for Edward, one of which is called the Sora Beans, which introduces the Antique Plateau. So, just like that, I arrive at Harmatan, the main city of the Antique Plateau. Originally, I thought I only had to do a couple of things here, which may take 8 hours of gameplay max, so here's how the next 4 hours went. I left the town, spotted an enemy and got obliterated instantly. Thankfully, I was rescued by Gap. The only problem was that I had no clue where I was. So I started exploring, when I pulled my signature move of dying to a random dog. Then some dude. Then a shrimp. At this point, I woke up in the city, so like the intelligent individual that I am, I left to explore again. To my surprise, it turned winter while I was out, but I didn't really mind as the scenery was actually quite nice. But as it turns out, winter in this game is an absolute bastard, as you can catch a cold that will nerf your stamina regen. Anyways, on my little adventure I found an abandoned storage, we'll come back here later, a collapsed bridge, some abandoned houses where I found these cool gauntlets and these purple pipes. Then I pulled some Hushijutsu again. I woke up in some cave and proceeded to, well, <clears throat> yeah. I was rescued by Gap again and started making my way back to the city as I actually managed to get some loot. On my way back, I was attacked by some dogs. But they weren't the problem. The cold. Now that was the problem. I woke up right next to the city's entrance, so I visited the first shop I found to inspect the damages. As it turns out, I died so many times that I lost all my silver. But I was able to sell stuff, so after a couple of hours of exploring, and even more spent while unconscious, I managed to get a grip and actually started getting some Ws. First, I learned the Jinx and Torment skills. These allow me to tell a Joe Mama joke, which will offend my enemies so much that when I click my finger, they literally explode. Pretty good, but that's not really what we're here for. But yet again, that comes later. So with that, I left to try out my new skills. 
amazing. I went back to the abandoned storage to clean up and get all the loot inside. At this point I've been playing the game for around 5ish hours so I was starting to get the hang of the game again. And so, I, for the first time since I started playing, made an intelligent play. I applied some frost damage to my weapon and got to work. <clears throat> there we go. With that, I managed to get an elemental particle and an enchant scroll. Hmm. Just kidding, I was afraid to enchant anything as I didn't know how the system works. With that, I headed further northeast where I found these cool circus maximum looking thing. I thought it was just some random structure, but to my surprise there was an actual dungeon inside, the ancient foundry. I didn't know then, but this is actually quite an important place. Also, it looks awesome. There's all these machines, some forges, oh, and the rock mantis. Upon further inspection, it seems I woke up on the other side of the broken floor, so I just needed to find my way back. So, I started walking. The sound of furnaces that cast the metal for these golems echoed through the foundry as the purple glow of magic filled the room. But I mustn't forget, I'm not alone. With that, I got the warehouse key and made my way back to the city where I was able to sell my stuff for a hefty sum of money. And just like that, winter has ended and so did my first day. I had one goal for day two, and that was taking my first step into the art of blood magic. To do so, I will need a couple of things, such as the cursed and the possessed abilities. To do that, I need to clear the blood mage's hideout, which I was too weak for still. Instead, I decided to gather some money. So, I strategically started a fight against two enemies and died. Since I took that personally, I decided to infiltrate the nearby hideout. This time, with some more thought. So I used the bow, which actually worked out pretty nice. Amazing combat! Ah! With that, I managed to make 600 silver, just enough for a particular skill, specifically the Blood Sigil. This puppy does absolutely nothing as of right now, but later it is gonna be one of the most broken abilities in my arse. I know. While I was here, I also paid the local blacksmith to forge me some well needed armor. With my new equipment, I took interest in the farting tower in the middle of the abandoned town, which had an intriguing chest behind a locked door. I struggled with the enemies quite a lot, but through determination and a whole lot of cheese, I defeated the dog and the golem, which awarded me with a chest. Very nice! With that, I continued further, thinking that those were the last enemies. They really weren't. Nonetheless, I managed to pull the lever to unlock the door, and for my troubles I was awarded with absolute trash. With that, I went back to learn the last skill I needed from the Hex Mage, Cleanse, and with that, Day 2 has concluded. Day 3, today I decided to not waste any time and headed straight back to the Blood Mage's hideout. With my new equipment, the dungeon was actually fairly easy and after talking to this living corpse, I'm tasked with killing all the other Blood Mages around the area. So, I left to do just that. The blood mages themselves didn't pose much of a problem, but on my way to the last group, I encountered this. Either way, after a couple of Joe Mama jokes, I cleared all the blood mages in the area, and so I successfully got cursed and possessed. Nice! When I got back to the city, I found this deactivated golem that after activating warned the people of Harmattan that in a hundred days the Forge Master would come and massacre them. I was originally gonna leave the video here, but due to these unforeseen events, I couldn't leave it here. All this took me around 4 hours to do, so with that, I left it for the day.
I had big plans for day 4. As you know, I got all the abilities I needed in the Antique Plateau, so I decided to upgrade my backpack and get all the remaining abilities for this build. To do that, I need to go back to Chersonese. So I took the taxi service back to Berg and travelled back to Chersonese. Here I had to go to two different places. First and foremost, the bandit camp that I thought was a village the last time I played the game. With that in mind, I ran back and <clears throat> got to work. You! My trouble was compensated by the biggest backpack in the game, and absolute trash gear. My second destination is a hermit house. To do that, I need to go through Ghost Path. This mini dungeon is filled to the brim with ghosts and eternal beings. Unfortunately, I didn't think about bringing a lot of warnishes and my fist weapon doesn't do a whole lot of damage. But, thanks to my better equipment, I managed to get through it without any major hiccups. When I got to the end, however, I got curious about what was on the other side of this fence though, and well, it wasn't exactly pretty. Either way, after a tactical retreat, I managed to get to the Hermit's house and learn Mana Push and Conjure. With that, the build was almost ready. I still had one skill point remaining and I knew just the thing I needed that for. So, with that I made my way back out, but before I head back to Harmerton, I need to visit one more place. Specifically, Hallowed Marsh. This place is the spookiest place in all of Outward, but I'm only here for two things. First, I headed over to Dark Ziggurat, where I picked up a particular skill. And finally, I headed for Monsoon, the main city in the area. I came upon some bandits on the way who <clears throat> gave me a shortcut. I then talked to Alamon, who taught me Mana Ward, and with that my build was complete. All this took me 40 in-game days to do. Time to head back to Harmerton. If I want to stop the Forge Master from destroying the city, I need to collect 4 keys from a couple of different dungeons. But before I get into that, let me explain what this build does. It essentially relies on summoning relatively weak skeletons while I set up a Blood Sigil and cast Conjure. This activates a Blood Turret which will shoot DK projectiles and can be boosted by Possessed. Pew! 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 Additionally, you can also cast Mana Push which will deal extra DK damage. But that's not all. Fire Sigil is also a thing. If I cast both Sigils, then Mana Ward, I'll take 3 damage every 2 seconds. But in exchange, together with my Blood Turret, I'll also summon a Ring of Fire, and with Mana Push, I'll summon a Flamethrower together with Blood Tendrils. Long story short, with some setup, I can do this. So you have chosen death. So with that in mind, I headed back to the forgery to get the first key, which wasn't there. So after checking my inventory, I remembered that I got the key for the warehouse here. I put the two and two together and headed to the warehouse. As I entered, I felt the air becoming stiff like no one's visited this place for years. Boxes upon boxes lie upon the shelves, forgotten yet waiting to be used. A mining operation launched to retrieve the precious metals needed to make more golems and fight for the lives of many. Yet, all in vain as the scourge was lurking behind every corner. Thankfully, I had everything I needed. A bit of blood, some corruption, which made short work of them. Most of them. At the end lies the golem, the protector of the first key. I made the not so educated decision to fight it in a room filled to the brim with corruption. Nonetheless, I lowered myself into the arena and started the fight. My blood turret, combined with the might of my skeleton army, easily finished off the golem and saw the forge master call to me. Oh my god, I don't care, just let me get the key. Where is the key? Where is, is it here? Is it here? It, the, uh, uh, uh. I somehow ended back in Harmattan and left day 4 there. 
Day 5 started with an extremely smooth brain moment, as I completely forgot to hit the record button in OBS, so I lost rain 2 hours of footage. During those 2 hours I managed to do the following things. First I crafted myself a respectable upgrade in the form of a horror axe and an obsidian pistol. I also managed to clear the first half of the abandoned living quarters. Speaking of which... This place, once filled with peaceful people, celebrating the success of their civilization is now littered with beasts and bandits who roam the underground, ready to end anyone who's brave or perhaps stupid enough to encroach on their territory. The living quarters is connected to the rest of the long, long forgotten structures by train. I hopped aboard and left for the forgotten laboratory, where I inserted the first key into the mysterious lock, and continued forward to the destroyed test chambers. As I exited the train, I felt the cold air fill my lungs. These test chambers in the past used to test the quality and combat capabilities of the golems and elemental turrets is now frozen in time, with the aforementioned creatures adapting to their living conditions, some using the ice's armor, others evolving to leech off the cold to stay alive. When taking the elevator up, or in my case, taking a shortcut, we see the opposite. With the neglect of maintenance, the upper floor has been engulfed in flame, with only the toughest of foes resistant to fire being able to deal with the heat. The old training grounds littered with decaying corpses who've been forgotten by the fleeing people when the place fell, now only used by who've made their home in the side of the facility. Here lies the train key, with which we can unblock the train tracks and travel to other facilities as well. With that, our tour of the test chambers concludes. Our next stop is the Lost Golem Manufacturing Facility. Formerly used to build the golems to fight the Scourge, is now corrupted, with the Scourge ruling over every inch. The machinery of the old age stopped, never to be used again. The golems hanging for an eternity to come. Further is the control room that is filled with wild creatures. Thankfully, nothing overcomes the power of the underworld. I thought this was going to be significantly more difficult. In here is our next key. With that, I decide to head out into the snowy landscape to sell the loot I collected. On my way, I'm only left to ponder the fate that awaited those that came before us. A little while later, I visited the Compromise Mana Transfer Station, previously a place dedicated to regulating and transferring the mana used for the golems and the train is now barely functional with the pipes filled with magic circulating the system with no purpose. At the entrance await us a chromatic arcane elemental, a gruesome abomination with all forms of magic present in its DNA. But yet again, death is ever coming. Further ahead, elementals and illuminator horrors relish in the catastrophes that took place here. Taking the elevator down, we see unimaginable amounts of mana stored in spheres. Up ahead, we find the main reactor, but after further inspection we see nature is taking over. But here, we find our third key. With that, we only need one more, which we'll find in the crumbling loading docks. Once there, the stench of corruption fills the facility. Nothing is pure anymore. Broken and forgotten golems roam the lower parts, looking for a purpose, but for them, only darkness awaits. Surprisingly, the Scourge is not present here, yet all forms of life in the lower chambers is long decayed. On the higher levels, we see a sword golem, who gives us the key to the loading docks. On the highest level, however, we see corruption leaking through the elevator shaft, but it still stands pure. When entering the quarantine room, we find the sole purpose of the corruption was a corrupted giant with an elemental parasite. After trying my luck the first time, I got absolutely obliterated. Unfortunately, my weapon broke, so I had to make do with what I had. So, pickaxe it is. Take this, then this, then this, then- uh FUCK! third time's the charm.
No! This time I took some potions, prepared my axe, and not much later I put an end to the giant's suffering. Yes! With that, we got the last key. At this point I only had a couple of days to save the people of Harmatan, so I headed back to the city to prepare for the fight to come. I bought a lot of, well, everything and headed back to the laboratory. After inserting all the keys, the main door opens and the Forge Master calls to me once more. Making my way through the door, I realize the challenge that awaits. Unspeakable amount of horrors and golems trying to stop me, to no avail. To summer well, I make my escape and make my way past the enormous containers containing boiling, pure and corrupted energy. Fucking great writing. Containers containing great writing. That's being supplied to the Forge Master. But I manage to make my way through the never-ending wave of enemies and get to the library filled with the generations worth of knowledge. At the end, I meet the final defense of the Rustlich. After a... Quite honestly, disappointing fight, I get to the final door, when the Forge Master calls me one last time before our encounter. After hearing his story, I reconsidered my options. Am I really in the right? This soul was righteous, didn't want to hurt the innocent before he was enslaved, instead wanted to protect his people from the danger of the scourge. But after some thought, only one choice remained. It's either him or the innocent people of Harmatan. So, I drank enough to make the average British jealous, and headed inside. The fight was tough, four golems against myself. I set up a turret, and let it do the majority of the work. And when I saw an opening, I struck without fear. After a tough and, honestly, sad battle, I destroyed the soul of the witch. The witch, he called me one last time. Perhaps he was right. Perhaps this is the fate of those who's been driven mad by their own people, but it doesn't change anything. With that, I left the laboratory and found myself back in Harmatan, and with a heavy heart I swore to the name of the Forge Master to spread his name and protect the people from the Scourge. Thus, we were arrived to the present. Fear not, as this is not the end of my tale, but you'll have to wait a bit longer for the rest, so if you're interested, Scrubscribe! Once history is written, I'll see you again. Goodbye. For now.